Hi, this is Josh from Boost TVM. In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about editable tables. Now, editable tables in R12 uh, have not been particularly useful, but with some of the updates uh, that are um, in development right now and behind the beta flag, uh, that's about to change. So I'm going to show you a little bit of that new functionality and then talk a little bit about how they can be used. Uh, there are a lot of practical uses for editable tables. Um, you know, the first being mapping files. Uh, think, uh, imagine the cost center to IT tower mapping file. Instead of having to, you know, download it, make the changes, you know, change the percent of weighting for a cost center, or if a, an account description changes, um, you know, the, a cost center owner changes, things like that. Each time you have to download the file, make the change in the file, and then re-upload a table. Uh, it can be a little tedious. And then not everybody has access to TVM Studio. Uh, but if you could put that on the recording surface and make that editable, then each of the cost center owners can just be responsible and, and handle that themselves when they choose to, when something changes. Um, other use cases um, could be business process workflows. You know, rep reviewing something and then approving something. An invoice goes out and there could be an approval of an invoice, a dispute of an invoice. Uh, others, other use cases are around forecasting. You know, you can do forecasting pretty well. Um, the ability to edit your forecast right on the reporting surface or capacity planning. You know, so there's a lot of very practical use cases that will be uh, supported by this uh, newer functionality that's coming out. So let me show you what that's going to look like. So if I come in here, I'm going to create a new editable table and I have these two options. Blank means it's just going to be a blank table and then I can add uh, rows uh, manually into that table. Enriched is um, sort of like transforming a table or creating a generated table. It's going to take an existing table and then make an editable version of it. And then when I do this, it will let me choose the columns from that uh, backing table that I want to include in this table here. Now in this first uh, field here, it's going to let me choose which table I want to use as my backing table or my generated version. So I'm going to use the cost center to tower mapping file. Now an important thing to note here is uh, this primary key. And the primary key is sort of like grouping of the table. What is the lowest level of granularity that you want for this table? So in the, you know, the cost center to tower mapping file, I've already created this column called primary key where I appended everything together to make sure I had that granularity. Um, once you make these changes here, you cannot undo them. So if you find that uh, you don't have the granularity you need and you have variances in your table, you cannot undo that. Um, and you'd have to start over with a new table. So it is important to get this right the first time. The last option here is, do I want to allow these columns that are coming in to be editable or not? So I'll leave it unchecked for now and then show you what that looks like with, with both options. So if I go here to the editable table now, right now I cannot any, edit any of these um, cells that came over. But if I go here and check that, and then come back here, I now have the ability to edit these. So that's what that, uh, that checkbox does. Let's see, I can save this. <clears throat> All right, so pretty cool. This configure columns step here, this shows you the attributes for each of these columns. Uh, as well as giving me the ability to create additional columns. So I will create one called um, last reviewed. And then I'll just leave it as a label. And it, you know, the default attributes should be fine for this. And you'll see how I'm going to use that. Next, I'm going to create a report so that I can put this editable table on the reporting surface. So 
got that. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete this um, blank table here because this here is uh, a normal table. So if I pulled the, the values over to it, they wouldn't be editable. I need to create an editable table on this report. And so let me open this up. All right, I don't have, I don't see the table that I've created yet. So I'm just going to refresh my browser here. And when I do that, it should uh, be displayed. And let me get back to Studio. All right, so now it's now it's appearing there. This should be my editable table. So here in these editable tables, you have the ability to pull values over into it. Unlike if I was to come over here to regular tables, I wouldn't see that option. I would have to um, make these a model step to be able to pull them into a report. But on editable tables, I can pull them right onto the report. And so I did that. Let me pull this, the waiting amount over here. And so that's good for that. And then, so these are uh, columns that exist in the, the generated table, the original cost center to tower mapping file. This other, this last reviewed column, this is the column that I created in this new editable table. And so you can see, I can edit these existing values. So now if I'm the cost center owner, you know, say I'm the owner for 3395 here, I can come in right here on the reporting surface and make my uh, changes right here on the reporting surface. And then these um, immediately are reflected in the backing table. <coughs> so if I come into here, those surf report surface changes are um, going in and updating the backing table. So now I can have lookups from other area of the model, areas of the model um, looking into this uh, editable table. Um, which is very useful. Oh, and now, you know, this last reviewed column, uh, you know, a practical use for this would be, you know, saying when, you know, when was this last updated? You know, so you can start doing things like that right here on the reporting surface so you get an idea of the freshness. Another cool option is um, for new columns is creating um, drop down columns and then can easily just put the possible values any list of possible values uh, right here and then on the reporting surface I'll just close and open that I can pull that in and now those options are available right here. And if I come into the backing table, I can see the selections there. I can also do the same thing back here. Make changes here in the backing table that become available on the reporting surface. So it's very flexible, and, and as you can see, it's very simple. It's very user-friendly, uh, the way this is working now. So there's a lot of, um, with this functionality here, there's a lot of different use cases that I described that are now supported by this, you know, this current version here. Some of the limitations that it does have, though, is that um, you may have noticed I don't have the little plus sign here. I cannot make this, um, I can't make this a model step. I can't add this to an existing model. Um, so that means I could never drill down to this table if I wanted to um, use this as part of a, a service consumption table and then you know select a specific service and drill down to this and then make it editable. I wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but I could still make a transform of it and then add that to a model. I can do lookups to it you know that are included in the model. So there's there's some workarounds you can do to it. Another limitation here is you notice I don't have the ability to rename a column header. Cannot do that, um, you know, which is uh, supported by a normal table. So there's a couple limitations to it. 
Uh, but for the most part, it's, it's pretty great functionality that I think a lot of people are going to, to start using pretty quickly. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any suggestions or thoughts on use cases that you're interested in and would like to see a video about, um, leave a, a comment in the comments section and uh, I'll, I'll create a video for that. And uh, if you have any questions and want to reach out to, uh, to me or Boost TBM directly, just uh, you can send us an email to info at boosttbm.com. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.